Hello! Welcome to Colorado State University's crowdfunding platform, CHARGE. In this training video, I'm going to show you how to set up a project. For more information on the necessary steps you need to take before setting up a CHARGE project, such as working with your college or unit representative on project approval, please visit our resources page on the CHARGE website. You can find this at www.supportingcolostate.edu forward slash CHARGE. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. The CHARGE platform is managed by Community Funded, a local company started by CSU alumni, and you will need to have an account with them in order to set up a project. To start, go ahead and open up your web browser and go to www.communityfunded.com. And I have it open here, so I'll just click over to my tab. This is what your screen should look like when you arrive at the Community Funded homepage. Go ahead and click on the Log In Sign Up button. This takes you to the account creation page. Now you can either sign in with your username or email and password if you already have one. But if you are new to Community Funded, go ahead and click on For Yourself under Create an Account. This will take you to the individual account creation page, page one of two. And what you'll need for this page is your first name, your last name, a username, and your zip code. Okay, I went ahead and entered in my first name, my last name, my username, and my zip code. So once you have all of your information in here, go ahead and click on the green Next button. Now this takes you to page two of the individual account creation page. For this page, you're gonna need your email and a password. Okay, so I have all of my information entered in. Next, you're gonna want to go ahead and read and agree to the community funded terms of service and hit finish. Great, so now you have successfully created your account. You should receive a confirmation email from Community Funded right away. Once your account is live, you can keep track of your projects, view notifications, customize your profile, among other things. If you need help navigating your account or have questions about Community Funded in general, you can click on the orange Help button and explore their resources. Now that your account is set up, let's go ahead and create a new project. To begin, Hover over the downward arrow next to your avatar picture and then move your mouse down and click on Fundraising. You will then be taken to the Start New Fundraiser page. This is where you're going to want to enter in your project title and the application code, which is provided by the Office of Annual Giving. The application code is what links your project to charge and allows you to fundraise on behalf of CSU. If you do not have an application code yet, please contact the Office of Annual Giving to receive one. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and just enter in a test project title, and then I will enter in my application code. Now please do not use this code for your own personal project. You need to receive one from the Office of Annual Giving. Okay, so I went ahead and entered that in, and I'll go ahead and hit Submit. This will take you to the Agree to Guidelines page. Please read each guideline carefully and then check the boxes next to each guideline. Great! Once you have agreed to all of the guidelines, go ahead and hit I agree. Now it is time to enter in your personal information. This should be the demographic information for the person who Annual Giving can contact if they have any questions about the project. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in all of my personal information, which includes my college and department name, my first and last name, my email address, my street address, city, state, zip, country and phone number. So when you have all of your personal information entered, go ahead and hit save. Notice that it went ahead and saved our information but kept us on the personal info page. This is because now we're going to be clicking through these tabs on the side to complete our project. All of these tabs need to have a green checkbox in order for you to be approved to submit your project. So let's go ahead and start at the top and we'll start on the description. You'll notice on the description page that the project title you created automatically populates in this field. So next we're going to work on the project summary. The project summary is a description that gives you a chance to quickly and clearly explain why you're raising money. This should be very short and have a max of 140 characters. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to enter in um, some Lauren Ipsum. It's just random characters that have no meaning, just as a placeholder since it's required. Next, we'll go ahead and enter in the project description. 
Now the project description can be as long as you like, but the most effective descriptions are usually between 300 and 500 characters. And you will notice that the project description section also has an option to customize the text and do basic editing. So I'm going to go ahead and also enter in some Lauren Ipsum for this section. Okay, so there's my text for my project description. Now keep in mind you can also add pictures, you can add links, whatever you want to really convey what your project is. Please note that this section will be edited for spelling, grammar, and adherence to CSU style, and projects with too many mistakes will be rejected. If that happens, you, the project creator, will need to fix the mistakes and resubmit the project. This could possibly delay when your project goes live. Once everything is complete and you have your project summary and description entered, go ahead and click the Save button. Great, so it says your information has been updated. Let's go ahead and go to our goals and timeline. This is where you're going to enter in your goals, your timeline, and your budget information. So first, let's go ahead and enter in how much money we are hoping to raise for this project on the Charge platform. For this purpose, I'm going to say that I would like to raise $1,500. Go ahead and enter in how many days you would like to raise this money in. I'm going to say that I would like to raise $1,500 in 30 days. Next, we'll go ahead and enter in the project budget. This is going to tell people the specifics of what you are raising money for. So you can enter in the item name and the item description. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in my class supplies, pencils, pens, and books for my item name and item description. And I'm going to say that I want $1,000 of my total goal to go toward this budget item. Now please keep in mind that when you enter in um, the cost for your item budget, please do not include a comma here. It will reject it. Just put in the numbers. And then go ahead and click Add. See that it brings you to a second line where you can add additional item names and item descriptions for your budget items. Please be sure, however many items that you add, your total here at the bottom is equal to your total project goal. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in another item name and item description. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in another item name and item description, um, and this will take up the rest of my budget. Now keep in mind you can be as specific or generic as you want with the budget. You can add as many lines as you want. If you only have one specific thing that you are fundraising money for, you will only need one item name and item description. In this case I have two, so I went ahead and entered it in, entered in my amount, and click on Add. Great, now my total down here matches my project goal, so I can go ahead and click on Save. Next, click on the banner image. The banner image is the image that will appear on your project card. The project card is the identifying image for your specific project. Some ideas for the banner image include getting a photo from the Colorado State University Flickr site, um, you can take a still from your video, or you can have an image produced as long as it's accompanied by a release form. Otherwise, no licensed images will be allowed for your project. If you need a release form for your image, please contact the Office of Annual Giving. So to upload your banner image, go ahead and click on the Choose Image button. This will take you into your computer where you can select a photograph. Okay, so I went ahead and uploaded my image. Now I'm going to edit. You can move this little highlighted box around in order to refine your photo. So say if I just want the center of this building to be highlighted. Everything here in this highlighted section is how your banner will look. So when you're satisfied with your image, go ahead and select the orange crop image button. And this will show you what your banner image will look like. If you're not satisfied with your banner image and would like to change it, go ahead and click on the Want to Change Your Image, choose it again, and crop it again. Once you're satisfied with everything, go ahead and click the Save button. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and upload your charge video, so please click on the Video tab. Every project is required to have a video explaining the project and why people should make a donation. The video should be original, creative, and compelling. Your video should be easy to see, meaning it's not too blurry or dark, easy to read, and easy to understand. All videos must be posted on YouTube to comply with music rights and allow for closed caption capabilities. For additional guidelines and instructions to produce your charge video, please visit the charge resources page. You can find this at supporting.colostate.edu forward slash charge, and then simply click on resources. Once your video is on YouTube, you will see a link to post your video on the charge project. To do this, go ahead and click on your video 
In this case, I've chosen a sample one from Colorado State University. So go ahead and find your link and copy it. And go back to your video page and paste. When you're finished, click the blue Save button and you'll see that your video will pop up below in the video preview. Great, so now that your video is posted, go ahead and click the blue Save button and we are almost done. Now we are going to go to Categories. So here in Project Categories, is where you will enter one word descriptions that someone can use to search and find your project. Okay, so I went ahead and entered in my project tags. Please keep in mind that these need to just be single words and they need to be separated by commas. So once you're satisfied with your project categories, go ahead and click on the Save button. And let's go to the last section. With the Links page, this is a chance to connect your project with your organization's social media pages. It is highly recommended that you use social media as it helps you connect with your customers and allows you to tie in online activities. If you have questions about what social media links should be included in your project, please contact your college or unit representative. To add in the social media links, simply click on the appropriate box and paste or type in the link. Okay, so for my project, I have a website and a blog. I went ahead and entered in that information. If I do end up having a Facebook link, a LinkedIn profile, a YouTube channel, I'll go back and enter in that information. But for now, I can go ahead and click Save. Now it is time to go ahead and preview your project. So click on this lighter blue preview button. As you can see, here is my project card, which lays on top of the video. Here are my goals and how many days I have left which will start the countdown once the project goes live. Underneath, you can see that we have the home page with our project summary and our project description. You can also share your campaign on social media. There is also an area for update to view who supported your project and to add in comments. Once your project is live, donors will be able to leave comments in this section. It also has your campaign owner information, which is you with your account information and you can view the profile. It's a good idea to share your preview link with two or three people in order to help catch any potential errors and provide feedback. Now, if you would like to make changes to your project, go back to the project setup page and select the tab for the area where you would like to make changes for your project. Okay, so once you are satisfied with your project and all of the changes, go ahead and click on the application code link here and just verify that you have the correct application code. Then it's time to submit for review. So go ahead and click on the orange submit for review button. And this will again bring up a summary of your project and all of the information that you've entered. Please read through this carefully to make sure that all of your changes went through and that your project is set up exactly how you would like. Once you are done, go ahead and hit the submit for review button. Great, so now you have officially submitted your charge project for review. It should say up here in the upper right hand corner, submitted for review project. If you see that, you're good to go. Annual Giving will now review the project and send you an approval or changes within 10 business days. Once you're approved and the project is launched, you will be live on our site, yay. Make sure that you have an awesome marketing plan ready to go because it's going to be very busy as you bring in all of those amazing donations. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and contact the Office of Annual Giving and all of our contact information is on the charge site under contact. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this instructional video on charge and we very much look forward to seeing your project. Bye-bye.